<laughs> I think the, I think the balloons. <laughs> Well, before we get into uh, the message, I want to just highlight that was a camp promo, and I'm telling you what, camp is a blast, and it's life-changing, and we want every student and teenager, all of you who are watching online, we want everyone to go to camp this summer, and if it's an issue, we have scholarships available because we have people that believe in you that want to see you go. It's, we don't want anybody to not to go because they can't afford it. It's simply just, um, on the way out, our ushers are going to have a little pamphlet. There's also some at the Connection Center for you to get information. I emailed it all out to our Roots parents as well, so you could sign up. Um, and parents as well, there's kids camps. If you have issues with kids, we want to get you there, and however we can help you. Now, the camps are only 50% capacity this year due to, what, what's it called? Oh, yeah, COVID, yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, so that's... Uh, I tell parents, get in on early, and if you really want to go, talk to us, talk to us, talk to us. We'll get you there, because we believe in your children. We believe in the students, and it's life-changing. So with that said, also, um, that was Pi Day video, and I forgot. I don't have it written down, and I forgot the total. That's so terrible of me as your pastor to do that. So I'm not going to tell you right now, because inevitably I'm going to give you the wrong number. And actually, could you go ask Pastor uh, uh, James real quick, Jessica, could, or, or yeah, Amanda, you could do that. Go ask James real quick, and I'll uh, 
do that while well, I'm giving a couple more announcements. And last but not least is I don't know if you're watching Matt and Julianne online, but, um, you know, not everybody has been with us because of COVID. You know, some people haven't been here in a long time. So if you're new to Wine Dot Family, you might not even know Matt and Julianne, but they had a precious baby boy six months ago. And, and you haven't been able to, I don't think, meet him yet. So there's Galen. Uh, a super cutie guy, and I'm going to refrain from any sarcastic comments, Matt. We love you, and uh, we, he's such a cute boy. What a blessing he is. We look forward to um, just continuing to have him in our children's ministry in the future and being able to help assist you in teaching him about God's love. But if you have uh, any other pictures or photos, I, I haven't done this in a while. I used to troll some of you got your guys' Facebook pages and just throw, throw pictures up there on the screen. All right, yes, that's what I thought. I thought it was around there, but I didn't want to tell. So your generosity, so thank you to everyone who gave and baked pies. Thank you for everyone who was willing to be pied. Thank you for everyone who did the pieing because you helped us raise $1,517 for BGM Stay. <laughs> Woo! That's amazing. So praise God for that. I know the missionary is going to be so appreciative of that. So thank you. If you have your Bibles, open up with me to Luke chapter 17. We're going through a series called Living Through the uh, Life by the Red Letters. We've been going through the Gospel of Luke since 2020. And now we are in Luke chapter 17. If you missed any of them, you can go online to our YouTube channel. Just hit subscribe and you'll always get notified when a new video is uploaded. But you can go back and see all of them from the previous uh, year and a half. If you're new to Why Not Family, our vision is making it simple for people to find and follow Jesus. And I'm just going to throw this in there. Making it simple does not mean watered down. If you've listened to any of my sermons, you know that we don't skirt issues, we don't hide behind rocks, but we, we preach the Word of God um, as it's given in the text. But, but making it simple means two things. Making it simple means, number one, making it understandable. There's, there's a, a book, in, there's a, a verse in Nehemiah that says when, when Ezra read the law, he, it was understandable to everyone. So we wanted to make it understandable. We try to communicate it in a way that connects with everyone. Number two, um, it's removing barriers. And so we ask questions all the time. What are barriers to people finding and following Jesus? And we try to remove those barriers as much as is humanly possible. So that's, I just want to explain that because it does not mean water it down or compromise or anything like that. Um, we follow Christ and we follow the scripture. So Luke chapter 17. Let me ask you this question. What is your favorite fruit? Now, if you're watching online, please put it in the chat in the comments right there. What, right here, go ahead and just shout out. What's your favorite fruit? Apples. Strawberries, apples, bananas, pineapple, nectarines, watermelon, mangoes. Someone said grapefruit in the first service. I was like, hey, come on, give it up for grapefruit. So, so yeah, we all have different favorite fruits. Now, who is really, really nuts about fruit? Who, like, who is their absolute favorite? I need a volunteer this morning. Is anybody up here? Um, let's see. Hunter, thank you so much. Give Hunter a round of applause as you come up here. here. Give Hunter, come on up to the stage. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Um, he, he raised his hand internally. I saw it. So, Hunter, you have a chance to win this fruit basket here, and it has organic caramel. This is all from Total Health Foods, which is super awesome. So, um, we're going to play a trivia game, okay? And you get, here's the cool thing, you get audience um, support, so you can help him on this. But once you give me the answer, that's it, okay? So, here's, this is all fruit. So, here's the first question the, on the screen. In 2019... Statistics, what was the most popular fruit in the American diet? What do you guys think? Come on, help them out. Help them out. He, he says apples. Survey says and bananas. Woo, come on. All right, number two. Number two. Can bananas float in water, Hunter? Can bananas float in water? He says yes. Confidence. Boom! Give it up for Hunter. All right. He's one for two. That's great. All right. Question number three. Here we go. Here we go. What category of fruit are bananas classified in? He said berries with confidence. 
And he's right! Come on! Bam, bam, bam! Yes, it actually turns out that it's a botanical term, berry, not a common English one. So it turns out blackberries, mulberries, raspberries are actually not raspberries at all. Berries have to have seeds on the inside, not on the outside. Woo! Learning the thing. All right. So here we go. Next question. If he, gets, if he gets one more right, he wins the fruit basket. All he needs is three. So this is it. Just you have, you have two questions left. All he needs is one. True or false, the inside of banana peel can help relieve itching and inflammation such as from a bug bite or poison ivy. He says true. All right. And congrats. And the last one just for fun, just for fun. The last one just for fun. The largest consumer of bananas worldwide, is it Uganda? Is it Canada? Canada. Wow. And we can't edit that out in there. All right. Or, or the U.S., which one is it? He says Uganda. He's on fire. He's on fire. Congratulations, Hunter. There you go. Enjoy that. Give him a round of applause one more time. A good sport. A good sport. Good sport. Yes, we all love fruit because fruit is sweet. I, I heard, you know, heard people say it's nature's candy. Like why mess up something that's just naturally good? Because did you know strawberry uh, artificial flavor does not taste like strawberry. <laughs> it's terrible. But we, we, we like fruit. It's refreshing. I mean, who doesn't like watermelon on a summer, a su hot summer day? There's something about that's just refreshing. And we just, it's, fruit is good. We also like fruit in practical ways. What I mean by that is when you plant like a garden in your backyard, whether it's a flower garden or if it's fruits and veggies, there's nothing more rewarding than when you worked hard and, laying, and doing all the groundwork and then you start to see it grow and you see the fruit of your labor. It's like, yes, you're excited. Or how about this, students? You're working on a project, a science project or a reading project. It could be any project at school and it can seem tedious and hard work and then all of a sudden you get towards the end, you start seeing it all come together. It's rewarding. It's exciting. Or lastly, um, if you're on a ministry team or you're serving, there's nothing more rewarding. You know, Julie and I have been youth pastors, and Matt, Pastor Jessica was in our youth ministry when we were youth pastors. And it's just so exciting to see her and others. Some are in different states, and you see them loving Jesus and following Jesus and getting, you know, getting married and having their own families. And it's encouraging. It's rewarding. I like to say that fruit is the outward manifestation of inward work that has already been taking place. Because anytime you see fruit, there was always a lot of work that went on behind it, under, underneath the surface. And in America, we're attracted to the fruit, so we think, you know, if I go to Planet Fitness for one week, I should, I should you know, look really good. But that's, you know, you're going to need years of fruit to, to uh, have, you know, you know, these arms like this, all right, years, years of fruit. So the thing is, is fruit comes over the course of time, and we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 17, that fruit becomes a natural outflow of, in our lives as we stay connected to Jesus, because the Bible says in John that he is the vine. John 15, he's the vine and I'm, I'm a branch. And if I stay connected to him, I will bear fruit. So here's, a, here's the exciting thing. We don't have to make it happen. There's no branch that goes, mm, you know, if I just work harder, if I just reach out longer, I'm going to bear more fruit. No, the, the branch just it has to stay connected to the vine. So as you and I stay connected to Christ... We're going to see three specific types of fruit that Jesus talks about this morning that become the manifest as we continue to stay planted in him. So the slogan this morning is very sweet and to the point, pun intended, haha. -ha. Repeat with me nice and loud. Say, fruit follows. All right, one more time. Say, fruit follows. Yes, fruit follows the Christ follower. Luke 17, 1 through 2 says, and he said to his disciples, temptations to sin are sure to come. Now hold it up here on the screen for a second. I want to pause because even if you've been following Christ for 49, 50 years, temptations are going to bombard you. When you read the entire New Testament, you see that, that temptation comes from our spiritual enemy, Satan, 
and it also comes from our own sinful nature that's been tainted by sin. So it's important that we understand that, your, that the temptations are going to come knocking at your door all the time. Now, I, did an, I don't have time this morning. I did an entire series on temptation in 2016, and I encourage you to either go to our YouTube channel and go to playlist and, and scroll down to temptations, or go to our Facebook page this week because our social media coordinator is going to post a link to the to the playlist, and there's three sermons. I encourage you to watch that, and just because I think we have a little miscon idea of temptations, and there's so many people that that, that fall into the trap, and sometimes I fall into that trap where temptations feel like sin in and of themselves, but the thoughts that go into our mind. And the feelings that we have sometimes are literally outside of our control. They just come. But the question is, what do we do with them? Right? And that determines whether or not it becomes sin. So our feelings don't control us. Our thoughts don't control us. The Holy Spirit and the Word of God control us. And therefore, we can walk victoriously. So look at that. So Jesus says, temptations to sin are sure to come. But woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and was cast into the sea that he should cause, than she, that, than he should cause one of these little ones to stumble. Now this is powerful because Jesus is talking about sin and he knew temptation because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 that Jesus was tempted in every way that we are yet he did not sin. That means he was tempted physically he was tempted emotionally. He was tempted with sexually. He was tempted in every way, yet he overcame. And then he encourages us through him to overcome. But he says, woe to the one who actually is the one doing the tempting. And specifically in this passage, woe to the one who it causes the little one to sin. And I love this because Jesus reveals once again the heart of the Father that children matter to God. Children are so important to God. We see it throughout the life and the ministry of Jesus that children are important to God. So those of you who work with children, our teachers that work with our children in our schools, our own ministry team here at, at Wyandotte Family, those who foster and adopt are, are heroes because children matter to God. Matter of fact, I'm excited that for our own children's ministry for Easter Sunday, you know, currently we have children's ministries for our 11 o'clock gathering, but Easter Sunday we're going to have it both 9 and 11 because, you know, we're, we're expecting, you know, obviously additional people. But then after that, we're going we're gonna to go back to just 11 because we're still, due to COVID, kind of rebuilding our children's ministry team. So if you're not serving in any role here at Wyandotte Family, I would encourage you just perfectly consider uh, working with the children because children matter to God. And that's also why we can just celebrate this exciting fact is that when you give to missions here at Wyandotte Family, part of the missions money goes to fight human trafficking here locally in the U.S., uh, here in the U.S., also in internationally across overseas. Because unfortunately, a lot of people who are trafficked are, end up being children. And we want to do something about that. And so we support two organizations. Well, I'm excited to announce that we're adding another organization to our monthly support. And it's called Save the Storks. They're a pro-life ministry who I really respect. Because anybody can walk down a street and in a parade and shout whatever it is that they believe. Is that true? But it's a whole other thing to be proactive in providing solutions and, and being a part of answering the very thing that you're trying to, the problem you're trying to solve. And Save the Storks, what they do is they have, listen to this, this is so cool, over 55 mobile Save the Stork buses that go out giving free pregnancy tests and free ultrasounds to, to mothers um, who are pregnant. And here's the exciting statistics, is they said over 90%, I think it was like 96% of women who have pregnancy tests through them on their bus end up having um, the child full term. And it's, it's like another organization said 80% of women who have ultrasounds end up carrying the child full term. Beca even if they give, you know, give the child to foster an adoption, it doesn't matter what the end result is, but they carry the child full term because they see that that child is living and valuable and important. 
because children matter to God. So I'm excited that we're going to be partnering with uh, Save the Storks, and so our monthly giving is, is going to be expanding to, to the children and just investing in the children. So every time you give to missions, it's going to be making a difference in another child being born. Isn't that awesome? I love that. I'm excited about that. So children, so thank you, and I'm proud to be a pastor of a church that puts time, talent, and money into children. See, fruit follows. Luke 17, 3 through 4 says, goes on to say, pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, slap him in the face. If he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and he turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. Now, I love how Jesus starts off, and, and if you look on the verse, keep the verse on the screen, it says, pay attention to who? Why? Because the only one that we can control is ourselves. And the only one that we're ever going to be responsible for is ourselves. And so once again, Jesus turns internally. And I love this because last week, remember, the slogan was, it must start in the heart. Is that Jesus continually, continually, verse after verse goes back to our hearts. Because I don't know about you, but when someone sins against me, it's easy for me to get ju justify why I'm angry or why I should stay bitter, why I should stay resentful, why I should be unforgiving, or even why I should some kind of, some figure out how to get revenge and how to make them feel pain too. It's easy for me to justify that. But Jesus says, no, no, pay attention to yourselves. There was these missionaries that went to Alberta, Canada. And there was some different Indian tribes there, and there was one that was very vicious. Matter of fact, they would attack each other as well. And the one leader of the Cree Indians, his name was Maskapatoon, he ended up responding to the gospel and became a Christ follower, and his life was changed. And so he started learning about Christ and about the gospel, and then all of a sudden another Indian tribe came in and attacked them and killed his father. When that happened, he got on his horse and he went to that attacking tribe and he demanded to see the one who murdered his father. And as he came out, he met him face to face and this is what he told him. He said, you have killed my father. My, na my name is Miga Matoya, prepare to die. No, he didn't say that. No, he didn't say that. He said, you have killed my father. So now you must become my father. You shall ride my best horse and you're going to wear my best clothes. And in utter amazement and remorse, his enemy explained, my son, now you have killed me. He meant, of course, that the hate of his own heart has been erased by the forgiveness that this guy has shown. See, in every situation we find ourselves in, the question we have to ask ourselves is, what's the condition of my heart? What's the condition of my heart? Whether you know, we're putting up boundaries, which are very healthy when, it's, when, when you're in unhealthy situations. Boundaries are necessary. But even as you do it in love, you say, okay, I'm going to relinquish the judgment. See, forgiveness is, is taking the judgment that I am holding in my heart against an individual and releasing that judgment to the Lord and saying, I'm going to continue to pray for and bless and love the, this person, even though they've hurt me. And Lord, I'm going to trust you that you're going to bring justice and vindication wherever you best see fit. And even in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus records it saying 70 times 7. So the point here is, is that, that when we're tempted, remember when Jesus said temptation is going to come? Remember that? I, just, I started off with that. So now when you, when, you, when you read this in context, you're going, wow, one of the major temptations that comes to us as Christ followers is unforgiveness. Because people are constantly going to be hurting us. And Jesus says, temptations are going to come. But you know what? We can forgive. And Jesus shows us the example. I love what Jeannie Mayo says. She says it this way, is the bigger person always initiates forgiveness. Well, what did, what did our Heavenly Father do to us? Aren't you thankful he initiated forgiveness? That when I had sinned against him, he pursued me. Jesus came to us 
when every other religion says work your way to be good enough and earn brownie points and maybe you'll make it in whatever afterlife is. God says, no, I'm coming down to you and I'm going to walk like you. I'm going to experience everything that you do. I'm going to overcome sin, hell and the grave and I, because I love you. And so Jesus showed the way. And even, even when he, you know, he was on the earth towards the end, he was betrayed by Judas. He was denied by Peter. He was abandoned by his best friends in his time of need. And when he was beaten and nailed on the cross, even though he was innocent, and while he was hanging on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And I'm, I'm blown. I had this thought that just came to my mind during the first gathering when I was preaching. Is I don't know about you, but when I'm tired, I'm not as holy. When I'm exhausted, my, my, my temper, is a li- my, my fuse is a little bit shorter. I get annoyed a lot, you know. All that stuff. Well, here's Jesus, beaten, bloody, and hanging on a cross, dying. And yet, he says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. So so he initiated it, and he modeled for it. And so one of the fruits that grows in the life of a Christ follower is the fruit of forgiveness. That's what we're called to do. You know, we had... Kevin Ransby, like I mentioned earlier last week, and, and he just shared his journey of how he had to forgive the man that stabbed him 37 times and broke into his home. And, and how that when you don't forgive, not only when you don't forgive the individual, but you have to forgive them for the impact that the pain has caused on you. He said, I had to not only forgive him for stabbing me 37 times, I had to forgive him for all the sleepless nights because I was afraid to go to sleep. I had to forgive him for my children crying because they didn't know what was going to happen next. I had to forgive him for the financial, you know, chaos it created from all the bills and us having to move four times because financially we were in hardship. You know, I had to, I had to go through the impact as well. And, and he said, when you don't forgive, you open yourself up to the tormentor. And you live tormented when you don't forgive. Jeannie Mayo says this way, that it's like giving uh, someone... Um, you know, free access into your, to, live rent, rent, to live rent-free in your mind. And so Jesus says, you know, you're called to forgive. And so here's the cool thing is whenever Jesus asks, to, asks us to do something hard, it's always for our, our best interest in mind. See, fruit follows. And so the disciples hear this, and then they're, they go, this is difficult. This is hard. So what do the disciples say to Jesus? Look at this. The next few verses, they says this in verses 4 through 6. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. They said, increase our faith. They hear this. You have to forgive someone seven times a day. And they're saying, Lord, for, you know, man, increase my faith. Because they probably had people that they had, to, they had to forgive and they had to wrestle with. And Jesus said to them, if you have faith like a grain of a mustard seed, you could say to the mulberry seed, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. So, man, the disciples said, this is tough. Lord, we need you to increase our faith. And I thought, man, wouldn't wouldn't it be awesome if we found ourselves struggling with, with whatever in life instead of saying, well, this is what I think, and even though the scriptures say this, or even though Jesus says this, I'm going to go with what I think, or I'm going to go with culture thinks, or I'm going to go with fill in the blank. Instead of that, whenever we come up to something that Jesus says hard, what if we just begin to pray, Lord, increase my faith. Lord, I need you. This is difficult. Increase my faith. I can't do this without you. Lord, I'm not going to give up on my marriage. Increase my faith. I'm not going to give up on my child. Increase my faith. I'm not going to give up on, on, on praying for this person or, or reaching out to this person. Lord, increase my faith. And I love that portion of scripture because in the context, you know, so many people in the Pentecostal world use that for miracles. And, and I guess it could be true, but it's in the context of forgiveness. Jesus increased my faith. See, fruit follows. There's a story of the Last Supper. Anybody ever see the Last Supper? Anybody had the Last Supper painting uh, in their house, a copy of it? Uh, yeah, Leonardo da Vinci uh, wrote it. And what most people don't know is he spent years, I, if I remember correctly, it was like seven years painting it. And he actually had models that he would bring in specifically for the disciples. And he would sit there and paint the different individuals. Well, he, you know, got this, I believe it was like this young 19-year-old, late teen, young adult um, kid who looked very pure and innocent to be Jesus. And he worked on him, you know, and painted him for months. 
And then, you know, six years later, he was down to, uh, or seven years later, I'm not sure, he was down to the last character. Do you know who the last character was to get painted in the Last Supper? Judas, correct. It was Judas. And he was, he wanted to find someone that was, looked just beaten down by sin and just angry and just, you know, didn't look like a good character. And he was having a hard time finding someone until he finally found someone in a, in a I believe it was a Roman prison. Let me see here. Yep, a prison in Rome. And so he got permission from the king, and he had this guy came. And this, this guy looked hard. His, he had shaggy hair, a hardened countenance, did not look like a nice guy. And he would begin to just paint him as the guy would come in day after day. Well, eventually he got done, and he said, the prisoner can go now. And the, and the guard was taking him away when he broke loose, and he ran to Da Vinci. And he said, he said, look at me, look at me, don't you know who I am? And da Vinci scrutinized the man, and he said, no, I've been, you know, I've been looking at you for several months. I, I, I don't know who you are. Then the man slowly turned to him. He said, Da Vinci, look at me again. I'm the same man that you painted just seven years ago as a figure of Christ. That something had changed in him over those seven years. Now, there's debate on whether that story is true. Some say it is. Some say it isn't. But regardless, bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness will destroy us. And we're called to say, Lord, increase my faith. Help me let go of the vindication. Yes, I'm going to set up boundaries. Yes, I'm not going to put myself in a situation to get my head beat over and over again in a tough situation. But I'm going to set up boundaries, but I'm going to let go of that judgment. I'm going to forgive because you have forgiven me. So is there anyone this morning that is coming to your mind? And I love what Kevin Ransby said last week. He says, you know when you haven't forgiven someone because when you see them in a room, something inside of you just goes and tightens up and you try to skillfully avoid them. Or when they call your phone and you see them on, their, on your phone, something inside of you just begins to clam up. He's like, that's, that's a good indication that you might need to forgive. So if there's someone that comes to your mind this morning, remember, forgiveness is not saying that what they did is okay. It's not saying no big deal. It's not even necessarily forgetting what they have done, but it's letting go of the judgment. See, fruit follows, and we're called to forgive. I'm going to go ahead and skip verses 7, uh, 7 through 10 for the sake of time. Verses 11 to 19 is where I wanna, I'm going to land right here. It says, on the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered a village, he was met by t- how many lepers? Ten. Who stood at a distance and he lit and lift up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, they were standing at a distance because lepers were considered outcasts. They, they weren't allowed to intermingle with society. They were supposed to be separated. And so from a distance they cry out, they cry out to Jesus, have Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. As they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now, he was a Samaritan. And I love that Luke points that out here because the Jews didn't like Samaritans. But we see that the Samaritan was the one that came and gave thanks to Jesus. Then Jesus answered, "We're we're not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go to your way. Your faith has made you well. See, I love this because in this passage, we see one that came back and gave thanks to Jesus. And so we see throughout this, this, the context this morning that forgiveness is a fruit that follows. The passage of scripture that I read, which was very short, we see that humility is a fruit that grows in, in our lives as we follow Christ. And third, we see gratitude and thanksgiving. Gratitude and thanksgiving. As we stay followers of Christ, as we stay connected to the vine, we become very thankful people. So my question to you is, what has Jesus done in your life? What has he provided for you? What is he providing for you? How has he healed you in the past or how has he healed you um, in the present? How has he forgiven you? How has he guided you and protected you in so many different ways? How has he opened up doors and given you favor? 
Let's praise, let's let praise and gratitude increase in our hearts today. Let's thank the Lord for his faithfulness. And let's be a people of gratitude and thanksgiving because fruit follows. And I know some of, some of us this morning are going through battles. Some people, you know, are going through challenges. And he, he, he's sustaining you. He's walking with you. Just like that story I mentioned with Kevin Ransby. Some are going through depression and loneliness. And he's your healer and your companion. Others have failed and fallen short, and God offers forgiveness because his mercies are new every morning. So this morning, we're going to end with um, a song of worship in just a few moments. And if you've been struggling with forgiving somebody, I'm going to ask the Lord to help increase your faith so you can release that judgment to him. If you've been struggling with discontentment this morning, I want to pray that the Lord helps increase your faith and that you begin to um, have just a moment of thanksgiving and gratitude. And... You know, if, if, or if you've been going through, you know, this, this reality of going, hey, you know, Lord, I don't understand. I don't, I don't, I have all these questions, you know. I want to pray that, Lord, increase my faith so I can still worship you even in the midst of the storm. So in the closing video, it's going to be just a, a video about Thanksgiving. And so um, before you, we get to that video, though, if you can bow your heads and close your eyes, we're going to just take a moment to pray. And if you're watching online or you're in the gathering and you've never crossed the line, to a relationship with Jesus. It's really easy. Now, let me, let me rephrase that. It's simple, but not easy. Because the Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you believe in your heart, he was raised from the dead, you will be saved. Basically, if you believe he is who he says he is, he will do what he says he will do. And then you give him ownership of your life. You surrender. You step off out of the driver's seat and you let him step into that role. And if you've never done that, you want to give your life to Christ, will you pray with me now and you just say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I welcome you. Jesus, I trust you. I surrender my life to you and I want to follow you. I want to be that branch that's connected to the vine so that your life can flow in me and through me. In Jesus' name. And with heads bowed and eyes closed, if you're uh, watching online and you prayed that play, uh, prayer, there's a, a button you can, you can hit that says raise hand. And if you could do that, one of our prayer partners would love to follow up with you. And if there's anybody in here in the room, if that's you, say, yeah, Jeremy, that was me. I, I, ra- I crossed the line to a relationship with Jesus. When no one looking around, just simply wave a finger or a hand and say, will you pray for me this week? I want to follow Christ if there's anybody here. Awesome. Awesome. Thank, well, you can go ahead and, and look up. So, so here's going to be your challenge as we close with this praise song in this video is seven days of gratitude. So for the next seven days, before you leave for school, before you leave for work, or wherever you're going, before you start anything, is write down five things you're thankful for. And then the next day, do it again, but you can't pick the f- same five things. <laughs> You've got to pick something different. I'm gonna, we're going to stretch our gratitude muscle. We're just going to stretch it, and we're just going to be thankful, fix our minds on, who, on how good God is in our lives. Amen? Amen. So let, let's uh, pray. Then when I say amen, we'll hit the video. Then we can stand and, and close with this song. Lord, I thank you so much that you are developing fruit in our lives. And God, when it comes to forgiveness, it's not easy. So Lord, increase our faith. God, there's some that have really hurt us. God, increase our faith. We need you, Lord, to help us let go of that vengeance, that bitterness, that resentment. God, whatever is in our hearts, Lord, we trust you. And in that place, as we let go of unforgiveness, Lord, fill that spot, Lord, with your love and your presence, Lord God, I pray. Lord, I pray that you would increase the fruit of gratitude and thankfulness, Lord, that we would be known as the most grateful people on the planet. God, because no matter how difficult the situation is, God, you are still good, and you are still with us, and you are still carrying us. So I thank you for that, Lord. We praise you for that. Lord, we give you all the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen.
All right. Let's praise the Lord together. Come on, stand up. heaven invade our hearts as we leave this place, as we turn off the TV in a second. Lord, I pray that we would take heaven with us everywhere we go, that we would be an extension of your grace, God, that we'd be a conduit of your blessing, that you would use us this week for everyone is a missionary, God, carrying the gospel and the truth and love of Jesus Christ. We bless them and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Have a great week. Remember, seven-day gratitude challenge. Let's do it.
Let me take